uh, buckle up. <clears throat> buckle up. Uh, I thought I was going to get on here and talk about a little bit of the bowl game stuff for tonight. And we will. We'll get to it. But first and foremost, holy cow. Uh, Dindy. Gabriel Dindy just flips from Oklahoma to A&M. This is, um, quite frankly, uh, I, I'm ecstatic about it. I mean, it's, it's just a little bit unbelievable what's happening at the moment. Um, I don't know if I'd believe it as much as I would if, if you know, I hadn't mentioned about all the tracking that I did back in August to kind of see what was going on. Um, you keep in mind, too, that uh, Venables just got hired there. So the defensive coordinator from Clemson, uh, mastermind defensive guy, is now the head coach at OU, and he still flips. So what does this say? Um, and I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what does this commitment mean? What does it say? And, you know, some of all, uh, you know the usual stuff, uh, the belief in Jimbo, uh, what A&M offers. But I think more than that right now, I, I, it's, we, we have to start with saying that stability is a big selling point right now. Uh, it's not money. Um, uh, it, you know, I'm sure NIL plays a bit into it. We've seen what's been going on over in uh, other places where there's been big allotments of money that have been marketed out there. And despite that marketing, <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about, if you haven't get out there and look at it, um, there, there's some heart stuff out there, right? And uh, despite that, these recruits are still coming for something. And I think that they see that, you know, Bryce Foster uh, tweeted today and he was talking about the, his top five top, uh, excuse me, his top five places that he was going to commit out of those places. Um, the only place that the, the person that's recruited him is still at is at A&M. And so he's so extremely thankful to be with us. So I think stability is a huge key. Lincoln Riley um, leaving Oklahoma, going to uh, USC, opens up this job, right? Um, and, and all the stuff too, right? Because there's been a mass exodus from OU in the last week. I don't know, at least four or five guys they've lost. We saw the same thing happen right now that's going on with Oregon and Cristobal leaving. Um, and so... This is going to be one heck of a ride. Um, all the dominoes that are falling. You know, Kelvin Banks is committed over to Oregon. As a matter of fact, he just decommitted. So uh, there's a lot going on. There, there's just so much to talk about right now. And a lot of it involves A&M. Um, so this is a great time, great excitement. And you got to get in there. you got to follow it and be in it so that you can, you know, be a part of the excitement. We're not going to get every guy, um, but it's going to be fun. I am having so much fun with it right now. So, um, and it helps. It helps that we're getting some some guys. But this is part of what we've been working for, right? This is something a journey that we took uh, ten years ago, and we're really starting to see it pay some dividends. We've had some success on the field as well, which which uh, helps, and that's part of what we want to see, and we want to see more of that. Uh, but to do that, you, you've got to have um, guys and you, you've got to increase your, your, your recruiting gra uh, uh, draw. So you can really see that taking place. Um, so a lot more that's going on out there. Um, as I said, uh, Kelvin Banks has decommitted. We'll see whether or not we're the team for him. Uh, Dindy is the number 10th recruit uh, in the nation. So he is our now, uh, I think, fourth five-star. We have Nolan. We have uh, Evan Stewart. I'm going to make sure you get that right. Evan Stewart. Um, and then we have Connor Wiegman and now, and now Dendy. So there's a few more guys out there that we are in the running for. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that a little bit more, but I do just want to kind of give a, a little bit of a sneak peek right now because it has to do with Dendy, and Dendy's committed tonight. Uh, Dendy, and if we... Um, if Shamar Stewart comes into the fold as well, which it looks like he is a pretty good lean to A&M, but we're not, we can't be sure until we get those, those letters, right? I don't, I don't count my chickens before they hatch. But if we do that, we will have um, three of the top four defensive linemen in this 2022 class. That will be uh, Nolan, it'll be uh, Shamar Stewart and now Dindy. So, and, and we could be adding another. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see how things how things roll off. We are 
our class rankings, uh, my understanding, uh, I'm really waiting for this to quite fully update, but we have just jumped Alabama, as I understand. I'm going to have to double check that again, so don't, don't call me on that one, but I believe we're going to jump Alabama for the number two spot with this commitment. And that'll change, you know, that'll go back and forth when they're going to get a commitment, and then, um, you know, it'll change perhaps. But this also puts us, I think, within about five points of uh, Georgia for the top spot. And Georgia's pretty much tapped out on, on commitments. They, I think they have room for one more. Um, and, you know, you got to play some, some class calculator stuff. I guess they could possibly take more than 25, but 25 is the general rule of thumb. So they, they have one more to get to that 25 spot. Uh, this gives us four spots left. So we have some real um, staying power depending on, you know, who we add. We also, and I don't want to get overshadowed by this because it's worth talking about too, we added uh, Nabu today who is, depending on your service that you look at, he's a three-star offensive lineman. Um, I really encourage you to get over and look at his film. Uh, it was something, whenever I watched it, that struck me kind of similar uh, to Tyreek Chapel. Now, of course, you're like, what? This, you know, Tyreek Chapel is a cornerback. Yeah, but it's not about it's not about the position. It's the way the way the guy played um, and, and what he's doing with his his spot. He he looks like a four star athlete. So he's kind of my number two. I, I do have another person that I like to compare a little bit more to um, Tyreek, uh, not because of the, the position. It's it's Ish, Ish Harris, and um, we'll really talk about this more later this week when we do a um, an early signing day preview. Um, but uh, Nabu to me looks like he is more of a four star, but he's he's ranked a three star, and so that's why I compare him to, to Tyreek because he was a three star. And I, I kept watching Chapel's film, and I'm like, what what is it about this guy? And I kept trying to rationalize it and think about why could he possibly be a three star? The guy is like white on rice, um, but he was a little bit of an undersized guy, but he was fiery, and that's what to me overshadowed. The, the size uh, deficit. So I, I, I thought maybe he was a three-star just because of his sheer size. Um, but his play and his fire, to me, again, raised that up. And I kind of see that in this Naboo guy. Um, definitely see it in Ish. And I, I, I'm really interested to, to see a little bit more of that. I did break down more of what Ish brings to the table in an earlier video. So if you want to go over and check that out too, please do. Um, so yeah, really exciting time. Um, uh, Nabu makes us, uh, he adds into our fourth three-star of the of the year. So we have one kicker, we have Ish, uh, I believe Jaden Scarlett, and a defensive lineman, and now um, Nabu. So, uh, you know, oddly enough, he comes over from, from Washington. Um, so a little odd, that's where Banks was committed, um, up in that area. Not sure if I get it. Um, I think Banks' parents want him to stay home. Maybe this guy doesn't really like the Washington area. It's, it's a place I like to visit. I wouldn't want to live there, though. I'm, I'm, I'm Texas all day. Uh, be here my whole life, I'm sure. So, anyways, a lot, a lot of fun stuff going on right now. Um, definitely going to look at some more of the position groups uh, and what we have left to be offered uh, and possibly take and what our areas of need are later in the week. But... Uh, we'll do that when the time comes. So I uh, really want to kind of get over and and talk a little bit about uh, this Gator Bowl. Uh, I am excited about the Gator Bowl, and I hope you are too. Did I think maybe we were going to do something a little bit more this year, especially all coming off that Orange Bowl win? Yeah, I did. But when your quarterback goes down, I think all bets are off. We had some problems on the offensive line this year too. So, um with all that in mind, the two losses to Arkansas and Mississippi State early on, I'm excited about this. Um, very excited. I think um, maybe not just so much for, um, you know, the ability to go to a, a decent bowl, but it is with a matchup against Wake Forest. And if you'll remember, um, back in 2017 on, I believe it was November 25th, uh, we play LSU and we get... Uh, our rear end handed to us. Um, I don't know if the deficit was that big, but it just felt like it, it, it was going to happen. Someone's fired the very next day on the 26th, right? And then Jimbo is hired on December 1st. And so Jimbo's coming to AM, 
And then about 30 days later, I think December 31st, we play Wake Forest uh, in the Belk Bowl, and we lose 55-52. Uh, um, I remember watching that game and just wondering, what is going on? What is going on? Um, uh, an incredible game uh, in some regards. Um, Starkle played that game. I think he threw for, uh, I think it was 499 yards, three touchdowns. Starkle, you know Starkle, the guy that just barely stopped playing football uh, a week or so ago. Um, so I kind of look at this a bit of as a revenge game. I'm not much into that, you know, but, you know, having the rematch and kind of setting things straight, doing things the way I think we could have done and, you know, kind of reaching back now because that was the year we hired Jimbo. We got beat by Wake, and here it is now getting back to that. So um, funny funny little note there. We've now played Wake Forest, an out-of-conference opponent who we don't have a regular home-and-home uh, -home with. We've played them more times than Georgia, and that's been a little running joke about the SEC and the way the scheduling goes. Um, I'm sure that'll be even more of a joke once we add uh, Texas and OU, somewhat for obvious reasons, but also because of the scheduling stuff. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, you know, got to get a little little fun in, fun jab in there, right? Um, Leal is probably not going to play in this game, and um, I am let down by that, but I am also extremely excited for that. It's always good for us when a guy is going to hold out like that because he's going to be drafted quite high. I think Leal's got a really good shot of first round, so we'll just we'll see exactly how high he's going to end up going. I respect the guy's decision through and through. He could still play, but you know, if he doesn't, uh, it's his decision. He's got to, in the end, be happy with what he 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 makes his decision as. So it, you know, if it were me, uh, and it's it's in. I would get, I'll tell you know, I'll tell you what I would do, but I'm sitting right here in front of this screen right now, right? I'm not 310 pounds, um, and, and I'm not getting ready to be drafted in the first round. So I don't see a whole lot of, you know, um, meaning to trying to figure out, you know, like, oh man, what I would do if I was in that spot so much, because it's just hard to know without that experience. And so I uh, just respect the guy's decisions, what I think uh, is best here. Um, really appreciate what he's given to us so far, um, and he's a he's an amazing guy. So um, Aggie through and through, whatever happens to him, uh, hope him uh, wish him the best. Right. So we'll see. We got some other guys. Um, we, we're not real sure are gonna you know play or not play. I expect them probably to. But talking about like uh, Peavy, uh, Clemens, I think Johnson as well, Leon. Uh, all, I believe, have invites to the Senior Bowl and um, are going to play there. But I, I expect them I expect them to play. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're in those uh, Senior Bowl games, you're, you're trying to work yourself up. Uh, you know, you might be a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh rounder, and you want to you work your way up. So um, we'll see what, what happens there. Um, haven't heard a thing on Kenyon Green just yet. Um, I don't know if he's likely to play or not. More on that, I'm sure, coming when, uh, in, in the next week or so, and we'll get some more info on that. Um, early reaction, um, there's been some joking going on out there. Somebody posted that we were a four-and-a-half-point dog to Wake Forest, but uh, other lines have us as a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Um, so I, I don't really know what to think of this game. It's going to be interesting to see what the breakdown is going to look like. Um, especially after we kind of figure out who is going to play, who's not going to play. I think we'll be highly motivated. Um, Jimbo's teams always have been. So um, they have a good offense, supposedly don't have a very good um, defense, and we've had our issues. So um, can they capitalize on that or not? We're, we're going to have to break that down and find out. Just not sure. Uh, it's too early. And um, not willing to kind of go either way on that line just yet. So... We'll see. We'll see. But I'm extremely excited for the opportunity. I would love to go um, uh, in this year on a high note. Um, recruiting is not everything, and part of the reason why recruiting goes the way it goes is because a players, you know, believe in the team that they, they they are going to, even when the times aren't down. You know, going the way that you expect them to go. One moral victory, and you can call it some moral victory. You know, I know, but to me, it's kind of like small 
small steps that indicate progress. And we were in every game this year. Even you know, even the games that we lost, we did not get blown out. Um, we have, I think, had a blowout every year since entering the SEC, except maybe you know, I'm thinking like uh, Johnny's first year. Um, even even the second year was pretty good. You know, we were getting we were getting our tail kicked by Alabama that year, pretty good. But we we came back. Uh, you remember that what ninety five yard pass to Evans, um, and we came storming back. But um, you guys probably have great memories. You know, uh, e even even since Jimbo's been here, I think we've you know the the running idea has been that Alabama has you know handed us our our hat every year. So. Um, this is the first year in Jimbo's tenure that that hasn't happened, and we've been in every game. So, uh, small steps. Uh, tonight took a big step, though, with, with Dindy, and it, and it says a lot, and it's sending waves through college football. It really is. So, keep on the lookout for more things to come. Of course, I'll keep you updated as, as, as I find them out and give you reactions. So, extremely excited. Welcome to Aggieland, Dindy. And uh, for the rest of you wondering whether or not uh, you want to make it into this class, it's something, going to be something special. So come be a part of that. We'll see you for the preview for early signing day as well as for the bowl game. Until then, thanks and gig them.